So hello everybody, here I have a CME X-Key and a ESI X-Gem and the first thing you're wondering is why are these two different companies and they look totally the same. So this is not a kind of copycat thing or similar. These two companies somehow are related. I did not get the full story but it might also be that these keywords might be distributed in the future under the brand or the company name of ESI. So they work together on similar products. So I have these two devices for quite some time, but didn't have much use for it since there are better choices if you're in a studio. But now that I have a lot of business trips again and for boring evenings in a hotel room, these are absolutely great companions to have some music jams going on. And if you look at them, they are unbelievably thin. Uh, same here uh, with the X jam and you can also stack them nicely and you just can throw it in your bag and you will not even notice that you're carrying around a full-blown keyboard with huge sized keys and a nice pad and knob controller. When I first saw this X key keyboard which is on the market for quite some time already I was very curious how these keys feel and surprisingly they are pretty good to play and I find them much better to play than any of these very small keyboards which are in size even larger. So you can play pretty like you play on a normal piano and, and it's not too hard to get into that feel of that. And you can even play pretty fast on these keys and I really like it and you have the necessary features so you can Maybe let's hear that with that sound. Transpose it up and down. Give some modulation. And you have pitch bend up and down. And you can all have even a hold function, which may better be shown with the piano. So pretty cool tool and this one is also supported out of the box with Bitwig as well as the x -Gem. And then I was sitting in the hotel room and looking at the x -Gem and what the Bitwig script does is you can only have your notes here on a grid and you can control six device parameters and 12 user mappings. And that's it. No transport or anything. And after two minutes of trying to make music, I then switched over to programmers mode and wrote my own implementation for the XGEM. And this is what I want to show you now. Let's focus on XGEM. And the XGEM has three modes for the knobs and three modes for the pads. And let's have the bad news first. There is no way to control the lights of the pads or of these pads in any way. So you have to navigate it blind. So I tried to make it as simple and as easy to memorable. Yeah, a little bit more improved control instead of only being able to play the notes on the pads. What I did is the following. We have also three modes on the knobs. So the first knob controls the selected track. Second mode controls the device parameters and the third mode. And it's the first controller who is officially supported for me to have this function controls the newly introduced project parameters of Bitwig. Five. Yeah, let's have a look how this works. So maybe let's start here with the drum machine. So this is also something you can select tracks, which is also not possible in the Bitwig implementation. And let's go to the green one. So the green one is the play mode. And there you can play the drums. And I have to say, these pads feel really nice. Instead of the knobs, the knobs are a bit strange to me. And the strange thing about the knobs is that they are working like endless encoders. So you can turn them as far as you want, but are, they are implemented as absolute knobs. So you have always turned them to the left to go to zero and then full to the right where it somehow will reach the maximum. So to make this work nicely, you should do the following. To have to set the takeover mode to relative scaling. So it will not jump when you switch to a different function and it will then scale a bit to the currently selected value. 
So, but let's start with the drums. There is also the possibility to have a transport bar. I will show you that in a second, but let's also switch something here. So here is the XGEM and a CME XK. And since uh, XGEM is now supported by me as well as by Bitwig, you can choose which script you want to use. And also it gets auto detected and Bitwig asks you then which implementation you would like to use. And then you should choose mine. <laughs> Okay, and then there is a setting for the transport, so you can say what you want the transport button to be. And let's go here for a new clip. And yeah, we can also say we want to have automation on as well with this new clip. So let's see what we can record. We should have here a click as well. Maybe let's do a faster song. Okay, let's stop that. And what we can also do, which is interesting, is there is a hardware repeat function on the device itself. And to make this work, it helps to send the sync signal to the device so it will run in sync. And this is done if you go back here to the settings and then go to synchronization. And you will also see here the X jam is here, so you need to enable here the MIDI clock and send it to the device. But it will also only work when playback is active, but we can stop here the clip to better hear it. And now we can have repeat in sync with our tempo of the project. So let's start playback. So you can do stuff like that. Okay, so this is also something you can do as well as you can use here in this first pad play mode. You can also have here the octave and the transposition work nicely. And you can also change the aftertouch setting, which is also a uh, and the velocity as well. So this is also hardware settings which you can apply to this first pad setup. So let's go to the second channel here where we have bass. You could also play that here on a keyboard, but let's go for the pads. So here you can also use repeat. So, and I already clicked around here on the second page, which is the one to control the track. So both the second mode and the third mode have here a transport bar and you saw me already using it. So the first one starts playback and you stops it again. And you can also double tap it to jump back to the beginning here of the arrangement. You can move here the arrangement position. Let's Zoom that down so you can also move, you can also keep it pressed to move here the play cursor in the project and double press to go to the first one. And this one is this record function which you can configure in the settings as well. And here currently creates now a new clip. Okay, and the pads above, the eight on the top, select up to eight tracks. I really kept it simple. It's not for accessing more than eight tracks, just to keep it really simple. So go to the first, second, third, fourth, and so on as well. And the third row here controls the selected track. So you can solo it with the first one, mute it, toggle record enabled state, as well as to deactivate and activate the track as well. So this is track mode. And if you were here in the first one, we also have here a track mode and the first knob controls the volume of a track. The, we can maybe start playback so we can hear that. You can change the panorama with the second one. 
and you can control the master volume. So this one is the master volume. And then you have three cents for the track. So this one controls the first track, but we somehow turn that one down. Okay, let's stop that. And we have now the second mode also to change device parameters. Let's go to the bass again and we can fiddle around here a little bit with the bass sound. To control the device in the device mode, we have to go here to the third mode. And since we have eight parameters, but only six knobs, I split it up so we can edit here with the first four knobs. You can edit the first four parameters. And if you press the eighth pad, you can switch to the other four parameters. And the knob on the top right is again controls here the master volume and the one below controls the currently selected track volume so also in this device mode you can quickly change the volume the important track volume as well as a selected track volume so as i said that one toggles between one to four and five to eight knobs and the other select the first seven parameter pages so the first one selects a perform and then the next one common and oscillator one two and so on up to the seventh parameter. And for all of them, you can toggle between the first four and the last four parameters. And the third row here then also has some functions related to the device. So you can switch to the next and previous device. So we should add something. Maybe let's add here a chorus to that. And now you can use these two pads to toggle between the devices. If you add another one, you can also go to the third and back. The next one turns the device on and off. And the last one toggles the window. So this one has no window, but this one has a window and you can also close it. And the row below, as I said before, controls again the transport like in the track mode as well. So you can start playback, move here the play cursor as well as record. And the last mode is definitely the new one. As I said, the first one in any device I support, which has this new function. You have the project parameters as part of the script. And if we learn something, so for example, let's say I want to control the filter with that one. And here, let's go to that one. I want to have also the high pass filter for the drums on that one. And here, let's say I have no idea what we have with that one. Why not also have here a filter? And let's see what we can do with that. So start playback. And this should control all the first. As you see, you can control the filter as well as the high pass of the drums.
Bang. I'm really sure I forgot some things, but since this is already long enough, don't forget to look into the manual of Driven by Morse, which each and every function is also explained in detail. And if you're on a trip, sitting in your hotel room, don't forget to make some funky music. 